Yo folks and welcome to your channel. In today's video, we'll be covering counterside global and some mistakes to avoid. Let's jump right into this. First thing is being go into management right here. We're going to be talking about the best SR and R and neutral units in the game. First ones being is Evelyn Keller right here. Now, the reason why she is so good is she is the best dedicated healer, in my opinion. Towering Yank Rim. Reason for that is her heals are just better. She has a heal over time, over 8 seconds. She also has a basic attack that grants a heal. She can grant damage resistance. Not to mention, she can increase attack for all allies regardless of their type. So whether they're a counter, a soldier, whichever, she can heal them and grant them attack buffs. Not to mention, her limit break is just going to be easier because you can get dupes of her a lot easier being an SR. And her skill training is going to be easier because her skill training cost is much lower. And not to mention easier limit breaks like we talked about earlier. Another unit that I wanted to talk about, of course, is Claudia Nelson because she is a phenomenal healer on her own right. Reason for that is she can grant barriers. Her cooldown is relatively low. It's going to be very easy to limit break her because she's a rare unit. You can also farm her, which makes it really nice. Her skill training is relatively cheap. Definitely a PvE unit and decent PvP unit in the bronze levels, I would have to say. Next, let's go ahead and talk about my favorite neutral unit in the entire game. And if you go into employees right here and then you filter down to snipers, it's going to be the adamant sniper right here. Now, the reason why she is so good is because of the fact that she acts like a tower, but she is going to be a sniper. What does that mean? So if you place her down on the field, she does not move. She will just stay in one location and she will build attack speed buffs based off the fact that she is just completing attacks. We actually cast a little doodad, this summon ground unit right here. They will just get keep pushing back. So that's a really nice thing about her. And also she's just going to be really affordable because she's a neutral unit. Downsides, of course, is she only has two abilities. And not to mention, she is a neutral unit, so she's not going to have the greatest stats, but really fun to use to shake up your opponents. And if you want to run a soldier team, it's going to be really fun because she is going to be a soldier as well, which makes soldier meta really nice. And also, it's really hard to find decent sniper units. The other best ones is probably like Haimi Sanai, which she'll be relevant for a little bit. And of course, Jalen, who will be relevant forever, but she's always being banned. Sylvia, she is mostly for mech style units, so it's a little bit harder. But, you know, snipers definitely have their role to play because, as you know, in ranked PvP, the biggest offenders of having a difficult time are going to be strikers like Ainz and Zwei and Nanahara Chifuyu. If you have her, she's another striker unit. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go into management right here. It's going to be this unit right here who's also a striker and of course they get countered by the snipers right so with strikers being relevant everywhere i would say you know having a decent sniper outside of Zhao Lin, outside of sanai it's just nice to have because the meme capabilities are endless for neutral units next let's go ahead and talk about the shops right here now the things that i want to cover is not going to be the monetization stuff because that you can decide on your own seasonal rewards right here the most important part of course is the classified employment contracts now this means that every single tier below it you have to buy them all so yes this is all worth it of course this is difficult to acquire because this requires you to be good at pvp you only need to be at silver in order to get all of this stuff so don't give up on pvp that's a huge mistake you will definitely get the gauntlet points to acquire this stuff. You can just save it at the very end of the day. And I would say it's definitely worth it. It's a mistake to avoid to completely ignore PvP. Hell, you could even just keep doing strategy battle because you don't really have to worry about toxicity and emote spamming. Ranked battle is a little bit different. It can be a little toxic sometimes, but you can also do friendly matches, right? In case you want to get a little bit better on timing and stuff with, you know, your friends and stuff, if you have any. Also, biggest mistake is going to be the fact that I started really late. You can see right here, I've only unlocked day one. I still have day two. It takes 20 hours. Also, that was a joke, by the way, if you have friends or not that can play this. I don't have any friends that can do it. So yeah, I'm in the same boat as you. Next thing it's being, of course, is in the missions right here. Do not forget to do these. These are greatly important, especially going to be the small firm. The firm stuff is going to be the greatest ways that I acquire resources, specifically special appraisal. That's why I was able to level all of my units so quickly. And this rolls around to another tip. Don't build too many units at once. 
specifically you can see it right here in the pvp areas now I'm not trying to like focus on PvP too much, but one thing to note is that you will see a lot of people are level 100 and they're focusing very minimally on the units. So that sort of tells you people focusing on these eight will just have greater capacities to, you know, bulldoze content. You don't need like 16 or a million units. Even if you do raid, you don't need that many units at the very beginning. You just need maybe a good strong eight and you'll be fine. You could definitely use four units and put them on two teams. If you're wondering why I'm talking about that, if you actually go into the world map right here, of course, never ignore the idle sections and definitely get the employment contracts if you can get them. I think those are really important. And if you want, you can get the tuning binaries, but this is more of a late game thing. It's not really that important for early game, I would say. But the thing that I wanna talk about the most is the dive right here. Some of you might be wondering, how do you build two teams? Well, you can build two teams fairly easily by having two groups of four, just use you know the free ships that you get, you hit select and you can go right here. And this falls around to the next step, which is the info. So if you actually go into operations right here, you can actually do the counter case now, this is really nice at the very beginning. You can unlock, you know, the special appraisals, which will give you more EXP for your units, which is okay. But the thing is, is eventually you get gear. I would say this isn't worth it for a lot of units. Zhao Lin being one of the few that's okay, especially if you need the gear. But at the end of the day, your gear grind should be within the appropriate areas, such as supply operations, where you can get some gear, or you can just make your own gear within the workshops right here. You know, feel free to make your own gear like I did right here. It's not really that necessary, but hey, you know, do what you need to do. I would just say, don't get too hell bent on unlocking all of the different things when it comes to the counter case, because this is more for a lore perspective and it's not really that necessary because you should be using your info on the towers that we talked about. Let's go back to that tower really quick. So once again, we're back here in the tower. You can see it uses info and you can see it's also on a time limit. You wanna complete this as fast as possible because once it resets, that's gonna be a lot of resources you're missing out on. And of course, this imaginary core is really useful for building more ships within the game. And another thing that's heavily finite as you're progressing, of course, is the events. Outside of the fact that we have started late, I am also unable to clear out the event shop, which is really unfortunate. I think the biggest thing I'm getting FOMO on is the SAPT core coupon, the counter SAPT cores, not really the special appraisals, not really the special ship stuff, but this is probably the most important. The gear, not so much since it's T5, T6 is already on the way, but yeah, just not being able to clear out this shop is really unfortunate, but I can do the other event stuff that is available, which is a little bit nice. So. I'll definitely focus my ends on that. Just make sure to do the things that have finite capabilities as in it runs out within a couple of days and the best areas to get gold from what I remember and also some decent gear was within these task operations. Feel free to correct me down in the comments, you know, in case anything is a little bit different from when I last played. I know a bunch of C players are definitely knowledgeable. Another thing to focus on is unlocking side stories, specifically this one with Kang Soyun. And the reason for that is you can get a free copy of her. If you don't know who Kang Soyun is, go into management right here. This is going to be Kang Soyun if you have you know, a copy of her. She's gonna be a phenomenal soldier unit. She is the best soldier unit captain in the game because she buffs soldiers, you know, damage resistance and attack. And for her to be a freely acquirable unit, I think is really awesome. And not to mention in the later game, this is very important. She is going to be getting a rearm. If you're wondering what rearm is, it just revamps the unit. It's sort of like an awakening in Epic 7, I believe that was what it was called, but it makes the unit stronger. That's the most important thing. If you're wondering where Kang is, she's right here. As you can see, she is insanely good both in PVP and in PVE once she gets her rearmed version. Also, this leads to Zhao Lin becoming an absolute powerhouse and she is insane, especially in her newer form. So watch out for that. And of course, Esterosa is another phenomenal unit. Don't sleep on her while she's A rank right now. She's going to be absolutely insane later on. She has this capability to become immortal, which is absolutely busted. 
And not to mention, you can get a couple of R or SR units that will be a little bit better. For example, Irie Alfred. And this also leads to the next tip, which is, should I be selling my units? So as you know, some units can be sold for other resources like these ownerless business cards. If you don't think you're gonna be using that unit, if they don't have a rearm, for example, then you might not want to worry about them. But I would definitely check out the tier list for the PC server, just so you can tell. And you can just go into like SSRs right here. You can easily see here are going to be some top units in case you're worried. You know, do they have a rearm? Are they going to be relevant? I would say just be a little bit wary, even though you can sell Lumi right now and get some fusion cores. If you don't need her, if you don't need someone who's a tower buster, then feel free to do it. It's up to you. But for now, I think I'm going to do it because I could definitely use those fusion cores. Obviously, don't sell someone like Gaiyun because you're going to need her in order to get to 110. That is going to be really important. But do what you need to do because these APT cores can be a little bit difficult. And of course, you can just go into the operations right here and farm your simulations or your daily dungeons. You got to do this every single day. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Everyone knows that because this is heavily finite. Also, when it comes to the supply operations area, you know, do what you need to do. I would say get the special catalyst in order to get more fusion cores like we talked about earlier. And yeah, that is going to be it. The most important tip that I have to say is don't focus on rerolls too much. Try to pay attention to the small firm. And when it comes to just the daily things, check which things are going to be ending specifically like new user missions, or the circuit link. I have to do this before it ends in eight days. So that's going to be really important. Every single day that you are not playing the game, you're holding back your progression in some ways. Even though I have dupes of units, which is really nice. I believe me starting late is like the biggest mistake that I've made when it comes to playing Counterside. Hopefully this helps you out and leave some more tips down in the comments. I'm interested because there's a lot of Southeast Asia people that play this game and are very knowledgeable. But anyways, if you made it this far in today's video, consider subscribing, dropping a like, leaving a comment, follow me on Twitch, follow me on Twitter. Once we hit 35,000 subs, we're doing a giveaway. Also follow me on Instagram if you want to see my RL face. Thanks for all the tips because I know you guys will provide them or correct me in the comments and have yourself a fantastic day. See you guys in the next one.